gives me great pleasure to talk to uh, Harry Potter, otherwise known to me as Sean, but Harry, I'm going to call you for this interview. Tell us about your love for Stoke, because it goes deeper than just growing a tash, doesn't it? Yeah, it, it, it goes back to when I was sort of about 10, 11 years of age. Uh, a mate of mine said, uh, let's go down and watch Stoke play Liverpool. And uh, I thought, well, I don't think my dad will let me out of the house. Uh, but in those days, you just got on your rally chopper, bite it down. Uh, we, we used to live in the Abbey, and uh, we used to get on the rallies, bike down to Stoke Station, hide the bike behind somebody's house, and then walk the ground. And uh, if anyone said, who you with, we'd just say the bloke in front of us and we'd be over the turnstiles sometimes when no one was looking <laughs> or under the turnstiles. Uh, but we'd get in the ground and then uh, standing up, uh, it was just an experience. Uh, the booth and end, uh, I can re remember so many <laughs> funny stories of me times in the booth and the end and meeting some great people. Uh, but always standing in that same spot every week. And you've seen some great players. I mean, now we're at the Britannia, but the, for people like myself and yourself who watched the old Victoria, watched at the old Victoria ground, uh, it was a sad day when we left, and we're all happy we're at the Brit, and we've kept the camaraderie amongst people. But of all those days at the Brit, at the, the Victoria ground, which was the favourite player you ever saw? Well, I, th I think you go through life uh, in sort of stages, so sort of. 11 to 20, I couldn't remember much about that. And then sort of 20, when you're in your 20s, you seem to have a job, a bit of money. Uh, you aren't married with two kids and a mortgage. And you're off on all the away matches. And, and down there, it, it was just the perfect time. My age was the right age group. It was the 90s, it was Macari, it was Stino, it was Biggins, and I, I, Vince Overson, Cranston. The, all you're not legends to the youngsters of today uh, or what I always say I, I'm I, you know I, I've met Mike Pedgick, Dennett Smith I wish I was 20 years younger so I could have been in the 70s and watched that football because the tales that they, re, they regale uh, are fantastic what brilliant ambassadors to the club them guys are Jimmy Greenoff <laughs> you know the they sit and chat to you and they've got no airs and graces, and they, they have a, a love, they have a passion for this badge. And uh, so my passion comes from Macari and being let off the leash, go and do what you want. I see all these lads now with the CP coats on and, the, and they look the part and, you know, they don't wear the stoke tops. And, God, we did it. We did it. I, your dads did that 20 years ago. We're getting old and grey now. And we do it a different way. Yeah, yeah. Different. We just do it a different way. Uh, but you can't knock us at our age for having the, this passion for the club. We just support the club like you do. Uh, I'd say when I was their age, in my 20s, we were going every match in the country. We didn't miss any match. We had experiences that are uh, X-rated on the TV. Uh, we could drink for England. We haven't done nothing that they're not doing now. So uh, what I'd like to say is let's come back to this what is Stoke City. Let's get back to being positive. Let's get back to supporting your fans. Let's get back to supporting your players, your manager, your, the club. Let's stop all this like little bits of bickering. It's, we're, we're all one club. We're, we're all going to stand together. We're red and white. And red and white is the future to me.